I want to preach this afternoon about laughing or weeping, in other words, laughing or crying. Psalm 22, verses 1 to 8, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, prophetically speaking, concerning this crucifixion. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my ruin? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. Speak about the Lord Jesus Christ here. The one who was crucified for us upon the cross. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures which means that your soul could be saved. God wants to save your soul my friend this afternoon and if you come and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ your soul will be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, all they that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. So here we see people laughing at the Lord Jesus Christ when he was being crucified. I want to look at three places where Jesus wept. Three places where Jesus wept. First one is uh, in Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 44. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Jesus wept over Jerusalem, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You see, the Jews as a nation had rejected their Messiah. They did not recognize the Lord Jesus Christ for who he really is. He, yes, he is the King of the Jews. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords, actually. There's no one greater than him. And he's the one that wants to be your saviour this hour, my friend. You've got to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. You'll never be in heaven apart from him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you know the time of thy visitation? Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ is calling you right now to believe on him for your eternal salvation. See, God wants us all to be saved. He wants us all to be in heaven. But we cannot be in heaven apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, apart from faith alone in him. We've got to understand that our sins are taking us down to hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Your sins need forgiveness. They need to be washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the only way that can take place is if you come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. God is not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want us to go down to that terrible place called hell when there's suffering and burning and torment. He wants to save your soul this other, my friend. The only way you can do that is if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and become a child of God? We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. 
And I'll just go down here and now, for thou knowest not the time of thy visitation, he's speaking to the Jews as a nation, they had rejected their Messiah, they did not recognize the Lord Jesus for who he really is. Yes, he's the King of Israel, King of the Jews. He's the King of Kings, as I said before, and the Lord of Lords. Now the second time the Lord Jesus Christ wept or cried is in John 11, verses 32 to 36. When, uh, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. So this man's name was Lazarus, and he had died. And four days later, the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected him from the dead. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Now here is the shortest verse in the whole of the Bible, the word of God. Jesus wept. It shows the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ has compassion upon us. He doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want us to die and go down to hell. God wants you to be saved, my friend. And the only way of salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ, by putting our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So there we have it. Jesus wept the shortest verse in the whole of the Bible, the Word of God. Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. Here Jesus wept over the death of Lazarus because he knew that it was the result of the sins of humanity. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. That's why we have death upon this earth. That's why you've been, you and I have been to funerals. We've seen people and they're not there anymore. Their spirit and their soul have left their body the moment they die. And they're either in heaven if they put their faith in Jesus Christ as their saviour, or they're down in hell. Now God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why we come here as gospel preachers, to give you another opportunity of getting right with God, of receiving forgiveness for your sin. Remember, for the wages of sin is death. Now, if that's all we had to say, it would be a very dismal sort of a message. But no, this is good news. It's how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures, which means that if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. God wants you to be with him for all eternity in heaven. Yes, for the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But the good news is that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You need to understand that. The only way of life is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who died on the cross for you and for me to bring us salvation, to give us forgiveness for our sins. And this is what we also desperately need, forgiveness for our sins. If we don't receive that forgiveness, we'll end up dying and going down to hell. God wants you to be saved, my friend. And that's why I'm coming here this Arvo. God is giving you another opportunity of getting right with Him, of receiving forgiveness for your sins, so that at the moment of death you don't go down to hell. God does not want that for you, my friend. The gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is what we need to understand. There's no other way to heaven apart from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The one who was crucified for you and for me can be your Saviour this hour, my friend. He's a living, loving Saviour. He rose the third day according to the Scriptures. He's the one that wants to save your soul this afternoon. Will you come to Christ in all your sin, in all your need? Realise you can't save yourself by any way, shape or form. We've got to be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our sins have got to be washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You think of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only perfect man, the world the face of the earth. He's the one that wants to be your saviour this hour, my friend. Will you come to Christ for salvation? 
But will you stay away? Will you just walk past and say, sure, be right, mate, it's all good. But if you do that, it just means that you're on your way to hell and God does not want you to burn in hell. He wants you to be in heaven. The only way you can get there is through the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, number three, the third time the Lord Jesus Christ uh, wept or cried is found in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, in other words, when he was here on earth in the flesh, uh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared, so why would the only man who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners or separated from sinners want to be associated with sin? In the Garden of Gethsemane, the, the holy soul of our Lord Jesus Christ was shrinking back from that association and also the fact that he would have to be forsaken by God. Romans 5 verses 8 to 10. But God commendeth, that means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even in that sinful condition, the Lord Jesus Christ died for you and for me. You and I can't help ourselves. We're sinners when we're born in this world, but God wants to forgive you of all of your sins, this other, my friend. And if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. If you don't, your soul will remain in a lost condition, heading down to hell, because that's how we're born by default, on the broad road that leads down to hell, or on the highway to hell, if you like. That's where we're born. We're going down to hell by default. God was not happy with that. So he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to come to our rescue, to be crucified upon the cross for you and for me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, I hope you've understood the message. We're sinners in the sight of God. God wants to forgive us of all of our sins. The only way he can do that is through the once for all sacrifice of Jesus Christ upon the cross, the one who loved us unto death, even the death of the cross. Yes, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. This is what we need. We need to be saved from the wrath of God that will fall upon us because of our sins that have not been forgiven. So, in other words, if you die with your sins not forgiven, by not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of God will fall upon you. Now, we're under the condemnation of God already. We're condemned already because of our sin. We've condemned ourselves because of our sin. And yet God is able to remove your sins, to forgive you of all of your sins. And then you can enter into heaven the moment you die. So you and I are going somewhere in eternity. What I'm saying is, when you die, when we die, we're going to be somewhere. Our spirit and soul leaves our body the moment we die, and we're either going to be in heaven if we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, or we're going to be down in hell. And God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. That's why I'm here this other. God is giving you another opportunity of getting right with him, of receiving forgiveness for your sins. This is what's so urgently needed by each and every one of us. Salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we need forgiveness for our sins. Yes, for if when we were enemies we were reconciled or made friends to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. So the Lord Jesus Christ died in our place. 
as the divine substitute that took the sinner's place on that cross, that you and I might receive forgiveness for our sins. God is able to forgive you of all of your sins this afternoon, but only on, on one basis, if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. But if you don't, as I've said before, you'll end up dying and going down to hell. God does not want that for you. He wants to save your precious soul. Your soul is very precious unto the Lord. He really wants to save your soul. He doesn't want you to go down to hell into his judgment. But that's where we're headed by default. But we see the love of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, so now I want to look at the Lord laughing. This is uh, Psalm chapter 2 and verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, in other words, against the Lord Jesus Christ, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Now to laugh at or mock, or mock in other words, is to make fun of. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Talk about the Lord Jesus Christ here. He was going to be enthroned. He is going to rule and reign in righteousness upon this earth eventually one day there's not that time yet so we need to understand that the lord jesus christ wants to save your soul this afternoon and that's why i'm here preaching the gospel of jesus christ unto you so that you come to christ for salvation so that you receive him he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received him to them gave him power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name. So if you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. Yes, I will declare the decree, um, the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. In other words, happy are all they who put their trust in the Lord. Psalm 37, verses uh, 12 to 15. The wicked plotteth against the just and, uh, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows uh, shall be, or bows shall be broken. Uh, Psalm 59, verses 7 and 8, Behold, they belch out with their mouth, swords are in their lips, for who, say they, doth hear? But thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. Again, to laugh at or to mock. Uh, Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 30, They would none of my counsel, is talking about wisdom here, they despised all my reproof, therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Uh, Luke 6 verse 25, Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. 
Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. In contrast to that, back in verse 20, and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor. In other words, happy be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are they that weep now, for they shall laugh. In Matthew 22, verses 13 and 14, Then said the king to the servants, uh, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's what's going to happen to you if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. In other words, the lake of fire and sulfur. A liquid fire, basically, that burns for all of eternity. God does not want you to go there. And that's why he's devised the means of escape. That is through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ can be your saviour this afternoon if you put your faith in him. For many are called, but few are chosen. In other words, many are invited, but few respond to the invitation. Will you respond now to the invitation? You know, the Lord Jesus Christ invites you to come. He said, come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe, will be inviting you this afternoon to come to him, to receive him for your salvation, so that you can receive forgiveness for your sins, so that you can enter into heaven. God does not want you to go down to hell. And that's why I'm here, to bring you the message of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 16, verses 23 and 24, speaking to the, of the rich man who died without Christ, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Romans 10 verses 12 and 13, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek or Gentile, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that can be you this afternoon. You can call upon the name of the Lord and become a child of God through faith alone in him. In Acts 26 and verse uh, 18, the first part says, Paul said that, uh, that he was sent to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. That's what God wants for you. Don't you be one that laughs now and cries for all of eternity. God has made salvation possible through Christ and Christ alone. He's the one that you've got to come to. He said, I am the way, not a way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I wonder if you come in repentance toward God. That is a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul be saved. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.